Hey everybody, it's Joe, and if you've ever worried about the Vox being emitted by your 3D printer, escaping into the air and silently and undetectably killing you, well my friends at EnviroCleanse also had the same concern, but they also had the solution. Can you clean the air of the Vox that come off of a 3D printer with a high-powered filtering system? We're going to find out today. Hey everybody, it's Joe, and my friends at EnviroCleanse reached out to me and wanted me to test out one of their semi-industrial, it's actually for home use, air cleaner systems. Now these air cleaning systems are, they're not trivial of co in cost. They'll cost you about $800 to get going on them, but really, if you think about it, isn't $800 worth your health. Now, these filters filter out more than just Fox from 3D printing. They actually filter out allergens from the air. They filter out pet dander and things like that. They keep your home air clean. But I was thinking about this more for the maker space. At the maker space, we have a lot of people coming in and out, and we use more than just 3D printers here. We also have laser cutters, and those throw up tons and tons of nasty emissions. Maybe not necessarily Vox, but they, it really does stink when we run that laser cutter. And so I thought, I'm sure that the makerspace could use this air cleanser more than I could at home. So I decided to set it up there. Now, in order to really be able to give you guys some data on this subject, I decided I needed a air purity sensor system. But doing a little bit of searching for those online, I, yee, ah, seriously, that's a lot to pay for a air sensor and they don't get that cheap. Anything that can detect Vox, the, the microscopic volatile organic compounds, they're very small. They're, they're so small that many people will say they can't be captured by an air filter. They'll just go right through. But the EnviroCleanse air filter is a little bit different. Not only does it have smaller filters, but it has a lot of them. If you'd like to see one of these air cleaning systems really being put to the test, I'm going to point you to a video, bam, from Joel Creates. He runs this machine through the ringer. He absolutely wrecks it as best he can to prove that even in the worst situations, it does do the job and clean it up. And I really enjoyed watching his video. He also tears the filters apart just so that you can see how much the air has to go through, which I think is, is the power of the EnviroCleanse. It simply produces more filtering for the air to go through, so it's going to catch more. It's not lackadaisical about this. It's, it's really putting it on as powerful as it can. And there are two layers of filters in this system, one of which is a carbon activated filter as well. So with the need for a sensor to be able to test the air in the makerspace to see if this does any good, but them being so expensive and me having spent all of my money going to Earth, which was a great time and I'll have more videos about in the future, I decided I needed a cheaper solution. Fortunately, on my Discord channel, my friend Blue Dust pointed me to this smart 3D emission printer monitor from Gary Pang that you can build yourself. It consists of, let me take a look at the components here for just one second, a particle photon, which is a Internet of Things enabled microprocessor similar to an Arduino, very similar to an Arduino, in fact, but uh, with online and, and Wi-Fi enabled built right into the chip. It also has this Adafruit CCS811 air quality sensor, which is capable of detecting Vox. Then to give you a notification of the environment, it comes through in three ways. One, they use a NeoPixel light on here, which lights up from green to yellow to red in case things are going bad. 
it has a little squeaker on here, a piezo buzzer, and I think it ha needs the active one. I tried them both. It wasn't clear, but the active one is the one that I think works best in this one. And then it will also communicate with an app on your phone, and that app is very exciting because it enables you to see real-time data readings and a history of data readings on there. So armed with my air quality sensor, I started doing various projects around the makerspace. I started running some PLA prints and I watched the levels on my air quality sensor barely move. It seems that PLA doesn't actually produce that many Vox. It's practically safe. Just to test to make sure that I was being thorough, I also printed ABS, which resulted in a slightly higher spike. Then I also ran the laser cutter for a little while, cutting wood, and oh boy, yeah, the air sensor caught a little bit there for sure. This air quality sensor is sensitive not just to Vox. It picks up smoke, it picks up everything, which can kind of be a problem. See, while I'm testing for Vox, specifically trying to find them, what really set this thing off? Using hairspray on the build plate, yeah, really, really set it off. If somebody was simply too close to it and... F My breath that bad, huh? The water vapor from their breath would set it off. In fact, the times when this was just generally more annoyed than at other times just seemed to be times when more people were around. Even if the 3D printers weren't running, it seems that the worst thing for our air quality is having people around and breathing it. Ugh. The results from trying to get the baseline data in the makerspace was not very encouraging. 3D printing, the thing that I was trying to prove that the EnviroCleanse can clean up, wasn't putting off enough emissions to be wrong. Even even the nasty stuff, ABS, really wasn't ticking off the sensor very much. Still, I did have a baseline set of data that I could see, and now it was time to run the EnviroCleanse cleanser and see if just having it in the room improved the air quality. So I unpacked it went super quick and easy. It's really not that complicated of a system. It's really nothing more than a very large fan and a couple of very thick filters, but that's really all that we need for this. I will say that their design is a little bit unusual in that the plug goes into the front of the unit. Either that or maybe the dial that you set it for should be in the back. I don't know. Engineering-wise, I think that they could have done something a little bit different there, and I guess I kind of understand why they did it the way that they did, but yeah, it it is what it is, and it's really, again, not that complicated of a device, so I can't complain. I plugged it in, I ran it for the first 24 hours on the whisper setting, as it says that you need to do that, maybe to get everything acclimated, and then I turned it up to its highest setting, and I started running the 3D printers. Now, while running the 3D printers, the Vox levels in the makerspace were just a little bit lower than they were before. And mind you, I was keeping the air cleaning sensor very close to the 3D printer, and the air quality sensor was actually between the 3D printer and the air cleaner. So the Vox were traveling, if they were traveling, from the 3D printer to the air cleaner and then the cleaner air was coming out. I suppose I could take this and put it on the output vent of the EnviroCleanse and just check that air that's coming out. But overall, the air quality did get slightly better. But I wanted to really test this thing. So I decided to do the things that really ticked off the air quality sensor. Sprayed a little bit of hairspray in the air, walked around and kicked up dust as much as I could, got as many people in there as I could. And what I saw happening was that the air quality sensor saw a spike. It saw a quick rise in the microparticles that it was scanning for. And then with the EnviroCleanse in the room, it went down quickly. The EnviroCleanse, of course, it couldn't stop the microparticles from getting into the air. 
but it cleaned them out of the air just as fast as it could. Now again, I was running this on its highest setting, and I think in the future I'm going to reserve that for special times, whenever I'm using the laser cutter or doing something that I know is kicking out the uh, nasty particles, I'll run that thing on a higher sen setting, but otherwise I'll just leave it on the whisper setting. It's so quiet that you don't even really know that it's there most of the time. Also, I'm going to move it close to the exit door so that we keep the stink in the makerspace in the makerspace and it doesn't get out to the rest of the building. So I would say overall the Enviro Cleanse was a success. It did a great job of markedly and measurably improving the air in the makerspace. And that is, in my opinion, the environment where this technology would do best. If you're just an individual in your house, you might want to get one of these systems for cleaning your house if you have allergy problems or if you have problems with dust and dander. These systems will get your air cleaner. But if you're getting it just to take care of the vox in the air, I found that 3D printing doesn't produce that many vox, that there are things that we do every day that produce more and are more dangerous. Now, I do need to do some more testing with this, and you might notice that this sensor is a little bit beat up at the moment. I took off the NeoPixel ring because I am planning on replacing it with just two LEDs. I, I don't see the reason for having 12 individually addressable NeoPixels just to shine a red or yellow or green light. You can do that with two LEDs and a diffuser. So I'm going to continue to play with this because I want to see it do stuff, but this is going to be a work in progress and a new project for me. I actually have a, a really fun idea for this, so you guys will get to see that in the future. But the EnviroCleanse is, for me, going to stay at the makerspace, and it's going to keep the makerspace's air clearing for the patrons who are there. I think that it's a great addition to a makerspace, especially a public makerspace, where you have the health of the public that you have to think about. So thank you very much to my friends at EnviroCleanse for sending me this air filter. I'm super excited to have it and, and super grateful for them to have a solution to the Vox problem that people have been worrying about. Now, before I sign off, I want to thank uh, Paul Cumber for sending me some new uh, ornaments for the, for the Christmas tree. Those just came in today. I'm super excited. He also sent me a great little letter saying that uh, I should use this self-addressed stamped envelope that he sent me to send back some stickers. I ought to make some stickers. I also wanted to thank a couple more of you. I, I got, uh, Derek sent me this really cool postcard, and I got a letter from, uh, forgive me, I have to check it really fast, DJ Slow Thumbs, talking about, uh, responding to my Makerspace video. I love that you guys are watching and thinking about these topics and these videos, and I love getting your mail. I, I apologize for for not responding to it before now, but you guys took the time to write to me and you sent it to that peel box that I set up. If you've got ornaments, we've got one month, guys, November, and then at the end of November, we're done. And, and also, my Lego discussion, very next video. This, this next video, we're gonna talk about Legos and what's been happening with, not Legos, interlocking building bricks. But as always, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, safety first. I care about you. See you next time. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there? And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards, and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there.